the central bank must come in when there is a when there is a government because it is a banker of the government. But after that, beyond being a banker of the government, it has to be a, it has a core mandate of price stability. But then it also acquires another dimension. It's an agent of development of the market. Now you can see uh, from where we started in 1966 is because the East African uh, currency board collapsed. Then there was nobody to issue currency. So the Central Bank of Kenya had to start. Now it starts by being a banker of the government. Then it starts by being uh, the, the distributor of currency. Then price stability. Then all of a sudden, since the financial market is growing, it becomes the agent of development as a regulator, both as a regulator and as a market reader. Now, what about the commercial banks themselves? They find a space when the market is vibrant. In fact, one of the, the, other, the other aspect was it that uh, banks in Africa always come in first of all to take advantage of government securities. And then the other one is to be present in the market. For example, remember in the 1960s, most, most banks were coming in from a colonial point of view so that they are not excluded from the East African community. But once they are there, the market starts developing. Now you can see a, spe a, a, speed, a, a, a space where the local banks started coming in. It's because they realized that the market requires different actors and different segments to be served. And then that's why you start now seeing the role of the central bank also start changing because of the market vibrancy. But in terms of necessity, market development has to help uh, the institutional development as well as economic development. And that's what we are seeing. But then we have to have a central bank that also evolves with time in terms of the functions, the diversity of the market, and all that. In Kenya, we are lucky because whenever uh, we're the, the banks came in, of course, we separated the financial, uh, other financial uh, sector regulators like CMA, Insurance Regulatory Authority, RBA, Retirement Benefits Authority, and uh, SACOS. It, it, has, uh, it has separated us so that the central bank concentrates very much on the banking. I could say that the effectiveness of monetary policy is the first one. The central bank can always say, have we implemented monetary policy that has coached and coordinated the totality of the economy? I can say, since I joined the central bank, this is six years ago, I have worked very hard on that. That's why everybody talks about the, 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 the central bank rate, CBR. It's a signaling mechanism. So essentially, the market has learned to be coordinated by the central bank rate. It's a signaling mechanism. It creates efficiency in the market. Of course, there are always questions about oh, what does it mean. Central bank and monetary policy is about short-term market rates. It's not about lending rates in the banks because that is determined by other, other factors like, like uh, the, the, for example, the riskiness of the individual going to borrow, the, the kind of project they are going to undertake. And obviously, growth, momentum, is always, they are all intertwined. The second one is that we have created uh, information, uh, this, uh, information sharing, which in, in totality we have created institutions called credit reference bureaus. You know, one of the things that prevents markets from functioning well is when you have information asymmetry. That is, information is partitioned. I cannot tell what you are made of. Yeah. I, I have to do a lot of search. Yeah. So information search cost. Now, the, 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 the most important aspect of it is that information allows you, it allows you to develop information capital. Then that can have several dynamics. The first dynamic is that you don't have to have fiscal collateral for you to get a loan in the bank. You can use your credit history. That is your information capital. For me, that was a breakthrough. And working with the KBA to make sure that this project is in, is, is sold, and is functional is very, very important. But this is something that happened during your, your time. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 there, there are some... some yeah, yeah. The bank is proud of. Yeah, some of them start from very far. Yeah. Because essentially, when I came in, microfinance was debated and it was passed. So it, it, since 2002, we had talked about microfinance. Micro, I was coming to the third one, which also covers a long, a long span. Microfinance is very important because, first, you have to accept that we are living in a country which has segmented markets. Each segment can be, has to be served by a different instrument. And even those segments of the market are very sensitive to the delivery channels 
of how you deliver services. That's why microfinance, which, which are both community-based or nationwide, are very, very important. That one is, the debate started all the way back in 1990s. And since, and the bill was passed like 2006, and we had to implement it very fast. Since then, we have like eight microfinance institutions. So you can see that that's something that has been coming on. Now, the, f the, the, the fourth one is, um, the, the, I talked about deposit insurance. It started all the way from the discussion in the 80s. But it was in, only in the 90s that we started having, uh, you know, th th there was a seed money put by the Treasury in the World Bank to start the de Deposit Protection Fund. Right now we have surplus funds, we have uh, developed that uh, 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 fund, Deposit Insurance Fund, which covers about 94% of all deposit accounts. And the protected depositors are up to 100,000. Uh, but we have been saying we need to revise it, but that is uh, the dynamics of the market. But you can imagine that if a bank collapses today, and uh, there's no reason to because we have strengthened the supervision, but if something like that happened, you'll be able to pay the de uh, protected depositors with the shortest time. That for us is a stability in the market. That is for us very, very important. No bank should collapse because the regulator has given that effort. You know, one of the things is about the, the, the environment you're operating in. Uh, the second thing is core capital is defined. Core capital allows you to serve a particular niche of your choice, niche market of your choice, with the ability that you have. So the central bank and the government defines the minimum capital. But the maximum or the optimal capital you need is determined by your core capital. What do we look at? We have risk-based supervision to make sure that we can measure or we can look at any system, any vulnerabilities emerging from the market and deal with it. That's why even after the global financial crisis, everybody said we want more regulation. I argued we need better regulation, not but more. not we more regulation. regulation because yeah. because we, we have, in Kenya we have developed a culture of consultative forum. We consult even any regulation that we put into the banks. We cons this consultation, I, I, I liken it with a, a referee, a football match referee. He starts by telling the, the, the players that you know the rules. For me, when I give, I, when I blow the whistle and gives a penalty kick, I, do, I have not taken sides. I'm enforcing the rules we agreed before the game started. That's the way I tell the bank. So we, everything is consultative. So there is no reason why you could see any form of bank failure. Yeah. So that is why. And that is, for us, we also emphasize that better regulation also requires strong institutions. But it's not strong institutions, just the regulator, but also the regulated. Uh, you know, when we raised the core capital to one billion, everybody was complaining. But we said, look at it this way. One billion allows you to rent to how many? Suppose you wanted to roll out a big project, a big housing project. Let's say 10 houses. Uh, you can, can you really rent without affecting the ratios? So we have the ratios we deal with. So for me, the most important thing is better regulation. It is going to help us. There are three dimensions to better regulation. One, we can, uh, we can price and analyze risk and price it appropriately. We can check the system's vulnerability. And, and, and three, we can come up with um, the, the incentives, all penalties, because we are regulators, that will encourage prudent, prudent behavior in the market. There is what we call uh, Basel Accords. There is Basel 1, Basel 2, Basel 3. They develop as markets develop. Let's, let's give an analogy or an example with the global financial crisis. Why did the global financial crisis happen? Is it because the Federal Reserve Bank was not uh, regulating banks properly? The bottom line is information partitioning. Because the investment banks are the ones that ignited the problem. But they were not under the control of the Federal Reserve Bank, isn't it? Britain, we had the FSA and Northern Rock problem. It's not that the Bank of England was, had, had failed to supervise banks, but you, the, when the information is partitioned and there is a symmetry of information, then everything goes haywire. So essentially what happens even in the 80s, you remember we had non-bank financial institutions. Then we also had different regulations for non-bank financial institutions and different regulations for commercial banks. Markets are very quick to take any arbitrage gap and use it, isn't it? Even big commercial banks started starting a non-bank financial institution. You remember that. And so it's, it means that you create a problem, an, an, asymmetric, uh, an information symmetric problem. So it's not, a, it's not a question of 
uh, not enforcing the regulation is a question is a combination of social political issues but also the economic environment do you know i used to walk all the way from the university to case K KICC here to come to my bank mm -hmm. and in the process i've passed like five branches of the same bank but if i went in there they could not recognize me why are they recognizing me i haven't changed is because they have now a, pro a platform they can use Rolling out products with different, uh, uh, perhaps, technological platforms is the one that has helped. Mm -hmm. Secondary, they have found their models, like let's say microfinance based, uh, it's working. Third, they have found that they can finance long-term projects, and they are found there in those countries. Those countries, Rwanda, Uganda, have been booming. Mm -hmm. So th these are post-conflict co economies mm -hmm. that are booming after the solution of conflict. Mm -hmm. And you can see how that expansion has helped the banks. So the banks that are able to compete, will find themselves there. Okay.